guys so I'm trying to kind of keep you more updated with uh, what's going on here and <laughs> also noticing the huge mess on my table once I start uh, filming so uh, I went yesterday to the art store in my town and I needed a few watercolors that I am running low on. Yes, it, that happened. Um, very, very surprising because I have so many, but it happened. And also I needed some smoother paper. Somehow all the paper that I have, not somehow, all the paper that I have, the watercolor paper that I have is um, cold press or rough, which is uh, more textured paper. And I wanted some hot pressed, which is smooth. Um, and I didn't really find what I wanted, so I ordered a few papers from Amazon to try out, and I will show them to you once I get them. But what I did get was this uh, ginormous pad from Canson. Uh, this is A3 size, so I'll just show you. I know these uh, measurements are not um, the classic ones in the uh, US or uh, North America. I'm not sure. Canadian people. Do you use the metric system? Anyway, we have all the standard, you know, A3, A4. A4 is our regular letter size, but this pad is A3, so that's really, really big. And there are 30 sheets. It is um, 300 pounds paper, so 140, uh, 300 grams, sorry, so 140 pounds. And it's really nice weight. Um, as I said, I already finished uh, using one. It's not uh, my paper of choice when I want to use a lot of water, but for most purposes, um, like, I don't know, sketching and playing with watercolors and playing with color combinations and just putting uh, color on paper, I really, really, really enjoy uh, this paper. It's I think it's great value. So this uh, huge pad cost me um, oh, and the papers are perforated here. Um, yeah, so this cost me 13 euros, which is, I guess, probably around $14 or less than $15. Um, and that is really great value for watercolor paper. So if you can get your hands on this and you're looking for some inexpensive, um, decent quality paper, then I highly recommend this. Now, in my... Um, there's this one store that is... Uh, one art supply store that is uh, out of town, out of the town, that's the big one and it has several brands of um, watercolors and it's pretty big. Uh, I think I had a, I can't remember if I made a vlog going there, maybe not, I don't know. No, I think I actually did a vlog going to the art store where I got these. So the one in my town uh, is kind of smaller and it has I think only one brand of uh, watercolors in um, like open stock not in sets In sets they have a few uh, other options but luckily it's the Schminke brand so these are German and um, they are lovely I love the Schminke paints I have uh, several of them on my regular palette and I just needed to replenish a few things and I'll show you these are the ones that I got and I just want to show you some samples, sorry. So this is the indigo from Schminke and it's my favorite indigo. I think I'll just show you my samples. So I make these cards and um, so this is the Schminke indigo and this is the core indigo and this is the white knights. Um, so the White Knights I have from their uh, 36 uh, pans palette and the core one I have from their introductory sets, one of their introductory sets, I think the one with earth tones. And then the Schminke one I bought as a half pan and um, I used it so I need another one. Now the other indigos that oh and this one is from mission gold i have their 36 uh tube set and i don't know if you can see now this is always you know a prof personal preference type of thing but these three have uh black in them 
and just in general I find them um, a little bit dead I would say to me I do like the white knights one and the core one is also okay this one is really not what I want when the mission gold not what I want as a color when I want to use indigo and the Schmincke one is definitely the bluest of all these. These are more, you know, muted, more gray. So it depends what you want, but it's very blue and it doesn't have any black in it. And I just love it. I think it's such a gorgeous, deep color. And I was just playing around in my art journal actually yesterday. This is the Jane Davenport, the large one. And I was just playing around with some blues and this one is using um, this blue that I can't pronounce the name of. <laughs> um, I'll put, if I can remember, I'll put a link to which color I mean. But this is the indigo, the Schmincke indigo. And then this is this darker blue. There it is at full intensity. It's, it's a beautiful color. It's also single pigment. I think it's PB60, I think is the pigment that is mostly used for this blue and I just love I mean look at the schminke it's just such a gorgeous deep blue I love it I think if you're looking for an indigo color for your palette then I definitely uh, recommend checking out the schminke one they sell these in half pans full pans uh, I think, yeah, small tubes, and then this one is the 15 milliliter tube. In my local art store, they only have the large tubes or the half pans, I think. Um, so I didn't have a lot of options, but I love this color, so I don't mind. Uh, and then two other dark blues while we're at it. Um, if you're looking for some dark colors to uh, add to your palette, uh, I really love these two. This is the Daniel Smith uh, Dark Mayan dark blue they call it and it's the pigment in it is PB82 and this one is the Sodal Sodalite or Sodalite uh, Genuine from Daniel Smith and this one granulates brilliantly you can see this this is granulation and the paint does that by itself and I love it so these are kind of my go-to dark uh, blues and I do use the Mayan dark blue, but these two are my favorites. So, a little bit about that. I also got the... This one is translucent orange. And this one is brilliant red violet. And I love these two colors. So, the translucent red orange is... The pigment used for it is PO71. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful orange. Now, Core uh, from Golden, Core has the same pigment and almost identical. If not, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference um, of between these two. And they call it transparent pyral orange. And you can find the Core one in their high chroma uh, introductory set, which is a lovely set. Great, great colors. So I had that little tube, that introductory set comes with little five milliliter tubes, I think. And I also used it. So the core tubes are not available to me locally. And uh, when you buy the individual tube, they are large and very expensive. So I got the Schminke one and it's just as gorgeous. It's the same pigment and Having the same pigment in two colors doesn't mean that it'll be the same color, but in this case, uh, which is confusing, I know that, but in this case, the color is almost identical, and it's a beautiful, beautiful orange. What I do like about the core paints is how they um, disperse and spread and kind of push all the other colors away, so... Um, yeah, but I'm not going to spend, it costs I think like twice as much as this to get the core paint. So I went with the Schminke. And the other most similar one I found in my swatch set was this color orange from Mission Gold. Again, this uh, 36 tube uh, set and their color is a mixture of PO73 and PY65. 
Um, and yeah, I don't know. The Mission Gold paints, I have some sort of issue with them. They're bright, lovely colors, but something about them just... I'm not in love and I'm not sure how to explain it. I, I feel like they dry somehow flatter than my other uh, watercolors. I don't know. I have to... I paint with them quite... I paint with them, so... Yeah, I don't know. If you have any thoughts on the subject, then <laughs> share with me because I'm not sure what's disturbing me about them. I definitely think that the colors are bright and they don't, um, like lighten as much as some other ones uh, once they're dry so they really stay bright the mission gold ones I'm talking about but I don't know I don't know I'm not sure um, keep painting keep using them but anyway I wanted to replenish my um, translucent orange one and the last one I got which is also I think this was one of the first watercolors that I got the Schminke Brilliant Red Violet. The pigment they use for this one is PV1. And there's my uh, swatch. And the other ones that were kind of similar in my uh, swatch, obviously there are more watercolors that I haven't tried. Not a lot, but <laughs> some. So this one I actually have to like water it down a bit because uh, it's just my application here was very, very heavy. So it's a little bit hard to tell how it looks when it's um, not so uh, pigmented, but I think it looks very close to how uh, this one is. Violet Rose from White Nights, that's this color. And I think this was an extra one that I got uh, when I kind of made my custom palette. I got the 36... Uh, full pan set from White Nights and then I switched around some colors to get the selection that uh, worked better for me. So the pigment here is PV2 and this one is not exactly the same but it's kind of similar. Uh, this is from Winsor & Newton the Cotman range which is their student grade paint and it's a mixture of two pigments PR122 and PV23 and it's a little bit more pinkish and less uh, luminous than the Schminke one, but it also costs probably a third, I think. Um, yeah, something between a third and a half. So um, it's definitely a more affordable option. And, you know, it's it's a gorgeous color, mauve. It's the color mauve from Cotman. Um, but it's not exactly the same. There's something, the luminosity and just, I don't know, this color is, it's one of my favorites in my palette. So that's it, just a little uh, share. Um, yeah, what are you crushing on now in your watercolors? Let me know, I always love to uh, discover new colors. It's always fun. And I have some other ones to share with you. Um, yeah, I just need to find the time <laughs> to do all these videos that I wanna do. So thanks so much for watching and oh, don't forget to check, I have a uh, watercolor beginners class and it's live and everything and uh, there's a special price until March 2nd so make sure you check that I will leave a link in the description box bye